Okay, to continue on, I was telling you about Charlotte. So I finally persuade Charlotte, you know, to join me through the gate marked Jesus, and we walk through that gate. That was another visitation to paradise. There was the Ancient of Days, beneath the largest of the trees in the Garden of Eden. And there were the apostles with the Ancient of Days. His beard, man, white, man, and all down his chest, down his right leg, and so long it ended somewhere past the end of his right foot. His white hair, man, so long, man, went down his back and disappeared into the grass and leaning against the great tree that he was up upon, and... And I looked at the Ancient of Days, and as I looked at the Ancient of Days, the Lord Jesus Christ literally came up out of. They were united as one. The Lord Jesus Christ, man, rose up right out of the Ancient of Days. And uh, walked floated, you know, moved towards myself and Charlotte. Thomas had come over. He doesn't like to be called Downing Thomas, by the way, for everybody who refers to Thomas as Downing Thomas. He hates it. He, he definitely has an aversion to being called Downing Thomas, man. Because who hasn't wanted to stick their fingers? Or who hasn't wanted to touch the risen Christ? Who hasn't? I mean, at least in your right mind, who hasn't? I mean able to raise the dead and heal every illness, able to comfort the soul from every grief. Now, if you're in your right mind, you, you want to be in the presence of Christ. At any rate, uh, so Thomas had come over to accost me, you know, like as if, you know, hey, what are you doing here? You know, and, and Charlotte, you know, like, like, we're supposed to state our business, like, all official-like, man, like a guardian of, of, of paradise. And, uh, and I was kind of startled by Thomas, you know, treating me like, you know, somebody that shouldn't be there and stuff. It kind of bothered me, man, really, in the vision. But Christ put his hand on Thomas and assured him everything was all right. And... Uh, walked past me and embraced Charlotte and welcomed her into his kingdom. But as Christ approached, man, everything that's awesome, everything that's good, man, everything that's essentially fundamentally wonderful, man, honorable, glorious, was like just emanating, man, from with such intensity, man. I mean, tens of thousands of sons couldn't compare for the power of of the love, of the joy, of the peace, of the wisdom, of the knowledge, of the the just the divine presence, man. Just coming off of him in this manifestation was just it was just like flooding. It's like so powerful, just blowing me. I mean, nuclear blast blast by comparison are just not to be compared. Tiny, infinitesimally tiny, tiny, small, like a little scratch by comparison to the power of the intense glory of the Lord that was coming off of him in all his virtues in this vision. In fact, it was so intense and so wonderful, man, that that I was envious to the point of wanting to also, just as he had was one with the Father, one with the Ancient of Days, literally, man, abiding and resting in the ancient of days i wanted to step into both of them i wanted to be right there with them it was just so awesome the the so overwhelming the the intensity that, that flooded all of paradise everything that god and christ is you recognize him as the source but 
but it's so powerful it floods every living thing in paradise. All his glory, all his love, all his light, all of that floods, floods paradise, man. But it intensely radiates right from him. I mean, you can't miss God our Lord Jesus Christ as the source of all that goodness. You just can't miss it. I mean, when you actually are in his presence, you just, you, you can't miss it because it's permeating every fiber of your being, of your existence, of your visible and invisible substance, of everything that you are is permeated with all that ineffable, wonderful, I mean, energy, man, of just all that's good, man, just, just, just it was just so wonderful. I was just so bathed in, in his glory, man, in that particular experience, man, that I absolutely never, ever, ever wanted to be without him. I never wanted to be out of his presence. Christ is awesome beyond words to describe, man. So far beyond awesome, man, that... Like I said, there's not words in any language really to describe the intensity of, of how glorious, how powerful, how wonderful. I've been in the palm of God, God Almighty. Like I said, he can make his hands, you know, big enough to encompass the entire visible universe, or he can make them small enough to you know, be microscopic. But in God's palm, man... I mean, after I got shot in the head, I had severe whiplash. I walked around kind of like this all the time and stuff. My head twisted because my neck, you know, was so stiff from, from the snap effect of being shot in the side ahead of close range. And uh, and I, I asked the one who suffered and died, you know, I said, you know, in many places here in the records of history have you touched and healed people so I I asked him in prayer you know to come touch my back my neck man heal my spine and and uh, and I was wanting in the prayer for him to physically you know manifest step into my cell and physically just grab me or touch my spine lay hands on me but well, whatever to heal my being man make me whole and for good reason I was hurting and and uh, but what I got was as I laid down that afternoon after praying reading just for a nap it was this dream where God Almighty reached down and took his invisible hand and grabbed my my beam and then his, uh, made his palm big enough so that I just laid in his left palm and as I was laying there he took his right finger and gently turned me over so that my back was up and and he touched me right between the shoulder blades touched my spine he went through the skin went through the muscle and touched my spine and in the dream my spine instantly was straightened and even in the dream all pain was gone when I awoke my spine was pain free my neck totally straight and it was that way for seven years, man. I never needed an adjustment. I never had one vertebrae out of place after that experience. In fact, my back never started hurting me again until the first day I went to work for money. The only reason I made that decision was because I wanted a wife. And I didn't think it was possible to find a wife just being a a vagabond messenger of God. You know, I needed to have some finances to take care of her and support her and take care of us. And although God was taking care of me just fine as just his messenger, but I 
but uh, no, I, I made the mistake maybe of going to work for money or at least seemed like I, I suffered for it man almost instantly At any rate I'm not saying that it's you know wasn't God's will or wasn't in his God's will I'm just saying that it just so happened it just so coincided that my spine man that was straight and not hurting at all for all those years that I was in service to him suddenly started I mean, once again, hurting men almost the exact day I want to work for money. At any rate, I, uh, I uh, saw Christ then, and I, I looked clearly, and most of the visions, everything was dim, but this, in paradise, it was, everything was bright and clear, and I saw his face. I looked at him close, man, face to face. I looked into his eyes. I wanted to remember his eyes. He told me I wouldn't, no matter how. He knew I, you know, why I was intensely, you know, looking at his face and his eyes, man, wanting to burn them into my memory, man, so that it would never be possible for me to forget, man. I mean, I'd seen him at distances, and even at the dark lit dining table but I hadn't seen him that close in, in intense light and I looked at his face and face to face and I looked and I wanted to remember the color of his eyes I don't know why it was important to me but he told me I wouldn't he told me I wouldn't remember him and I think the reason why Christ doesn't want his features so clearly crisply remembered I believe in my spirit was that is is that there's too much racial pride down here there's too many people fighting over what we look like you know rather than just perceiving each other's spirit soul and rather than recognizing that people fundamentally want to love and be loved and have you know mostly for the most part happy little rugrats of their own I shouldn't call them that children you know, that are happy and content and grow up to have their own little children and for the most part man, doesn't matter what race you know people want them to be healthy and happy and well cared for we don't want to experience a lot of pain we do actually like pleasure quite a bit it's obvious that all the races like to have sex, you know, otherwise there wouldn't be, you know, billions of souls on the planet. So, and the bottom line is, is that we're all fundamentally essentially the same regardless of our skin color. And, and factually, God's creation, creation, God's sons and daughters, and we should really try to get over, man, you know, trying to know one another after the flesh. In fact, the scriptures say, Henceforth know I no man after the flesh, no I know I one. In other words, he, he's trying to not look at the dirt, man, upon which your spirit exists, but he's trying to make sure that what is inside, man, is is a, an enlightened spirit, man, one, a being of light, you know, somebody that, you know, knows God and loves God and is passing on truth, man, and and the virtues that only come from knowing God and Christ. At any rate, uh, another time I saw Christ, I was, uh, um, oh, it was like the end of the world was happening or something. People were going nuts. Ranks were being called. It was like right after I'd been baptized and followed the Holy Ghost. In fact, it was the night that I'd been baptized. It was the, the night of this particular vision. So actually, it this this one probably was the second time I have to correct that other about the Bible reading it was really the third manifestation of Christ not the second gap because this happened the night I was baptized I had this particular vision where oh this guy in his van was yelling over the megaphone I told you so I told you so and it's one of those preachers about the end is coming and stuff like that and and all these people were like panicking and stuff. Ranks were being called. The world was, you know, as we knew it was 
basically coming to, a, to an end as we knew it. Now, the world wasn't coming to an end, but the world as we knew it was coming to an end. And, uh, and things were changing, and, and ranks were being called, and souls were being held accountable. And it's like, as the ranks were being called, my name was being called, and ranks were lining up. And, and then out of these ranks, you know, 12 names were called, and, and the 12 names were called... Actually, I'll start this particular vision over because it's a nice place to break. Uh, 